now from Lu uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, is Louisiana Republican Senator David Vitter, who has said he opposes a military strike. Senator, thank you for joining us uh, today, and welcome to Fox News Channel. Thank you very much, Eric. Good the, to be with good you. Good to be with you, too. The president's going to speak in just under 57 hours right. from now. He's doing a lot of interviews tomorrow. What do you want to hear from the president that could potentially change your mind? Well, I don't expect to change my mind. I only made my decision after very, very careful thought, after gathering all the evidence I could, including uh, participating in a classified hearing with the defense secretary and the chairman and the joint chiefs. Why didn't that change uh, your mind? Others uh, say that that changed their mind to support the strikes. Um, I don't know of anyone whose mind was changed at the briefing at the hearing I was at. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know of anyone whose mind was changed by that. I think what I have not heard, what the American people have not heard, I think what we're not going to hear is how this is a direct security threat on the United States and our allies. I think it clearly isn't. There is no direct threat. It's a horrible situation, as almost every modern civil war is. It's a horrible, horrible humanitarian situation. Uh, that should spark concern around the world, and hopefully the world community will organize and do something about it. But obviously, that's not been the case, and we in the United States, again, are essentially being asked to bear all of the load, or at least 99%. Well, the president has said, in a quote, that uh, this does pose a imminent direct threat to the United States. I mean, what happens if this then encourages other dictators or terrorist organizations to get chemical weapons and use them? Well, we do something about that. And certainly use against us, use against our allies, use across any border uh, would be a much more serious situation. But, you know, the slippery slope argument, uh, I think, has its limits. If that happens, if it is a direct threat against us, then we do something about it. Without getting into specifics of, of your classified briefing, what we know public so far, publicly so far is that the authorities believe that uh, the segment 450 of the Syrian army potentially did commit this act. They've got evidence, they say, that the soldiers put on gas masks, that the shells came from the area where the Assad military was, not where the rebels were, that the Assad folks have all this material. And the, US, uh, the EU today says that basically Assad did it. But you do have a point that there is no, quote, direct proof. They have those intercepts, yeah. uh, but for you, that's not enough. Well, Eric, m my issue is not the proof about what was done and who did it. I accept that conclusion. I don't think we're 100 percent guaranteed of that, but I think there's certainly the great w weight of the evidence points in that direction. Uh, that's not my issue. My issue is what is the direct threat to the United States or its allies, how are our security interests directly impacted? And what w have been the answers that you've gotten from that question? Well, you know, the administration has laid out a case, but to me, 95 percent of that case is about humanitarian concerns. I appreciate those. It's a horrible civil war, but that's very different from a direct national security threat on the United States. We do face direct and very onerous threats in the Middle East. The top one by far is Iran's development of nuclear weapons. One of my big concerns is if we get involved in Syria after Iraq, after Afghanistan, the American people are not going to have the stomach to do what it possibly will take to stop Iran from developing nuclear weapons. That is a major concern, has been a major factor in my decision making. And finally, Senator, of course, President Clinton, you remember well, launched those airstrikes in Bosnia and Kosovo, and that certainly worked. Uh, and how about the moral stance? Uh, you know, the issue of chemical weapons being so horrendous and these atrocities so unspeakable. Uh, we lived through the Holocaust, and there's the uh, refrain, never again, and now it's happened again. What do we tell the Syrians who are standing by with that and deal with it as a moral issue? Well, first of all, it's unmistakably horrible. It has happened again. By the way, it's ha happened again in Syria. It's happened almost a dozen times in Syria. It happened in Iraq. We did not intervene at the time in Iraq over chemical weapons. It happened against the Kurds. It happened against Iran. Uh, I don't think anybody is debating that it's not horrendous. Uh, the question is, is it a direct threat right now in the United States or our allies, and do we get involved in yet another Middle Eastern country, particularly when we have much more serious threats on the offing, particularly Iran, the development of its nuclear weapons? That is the challenge. That is the warning. 
the threats that this country faces. Senator Vitter, we thank you so much for joining us here on the Thank Fox you, Channel this morning.